Does it seem like everybody has the nice shiny toys on their side of the board and you're stuck with vanilla garbage? So take it with Sauron the Lidless Eye. Sauron the Lidless Eye is a legendary creature, Avatar Horror, for three black red. When it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap it and it gains haste until end of turn. Furthermore, Sauron has an activated ability for one black red. Creatures you control gain plus two, plus zero until end of turn, and each opponent loses two life. So what are the goals with our build today? Our main goal is to focus on Sauron's ETB ability, where we get that threatened effect where we get to steal a creature. And then we're going to sacrifice those creatures for value. So, 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 where do we want to start? I think we're going to start with the theft effects. Let's go. First off, we're going to start with those three mana steal effects, cards you've seen in booster packs before. Cards like Act of Treason, Besmirch, and Bloody Betrayal. Just going to give us a creature for one turn and put it on our side of the field. We even have access to creatures that let us steal other creatures as well. Cards like Captivating Crew, Conquering Manticore, and Molten Primordial. Now that we've got the single target and the creatures out of the way, let me show you some of the mass theft effects we'll be playing. The great thing about mass stealing is we might take away all of our opponent's blockers and pretty much get in unimpeded. I'm talking about cards like Mass Mutiny, Mob Rule, and the Tried and True Insurrection. Now we do have one final threatened effect I want to touch on, that's Grab the Reins. It leads us to our next point, which is sacrificing those creatures for value. It can actually steal and sacrifice all on one card. We may swing out with all those creatures we've stolen, However, we don't want the opponent to have him back. That's why we're going to include a ton of sacrifice outlets. First up, I'm going to talk about the cards that are going to stick around the battlefield and give us a free sacrifice outlet. Cards like Viscera Seer, Woe Strider, and Goblin Bombardment. These cards are perfect if we use one of those mass threaten effects. We can pretty much wipe out our opponent's entire board. Next up, we have the one-time sacrifice spells that are going to do direct damage to our opponents. I'm talking about cards like Fling, Thud, and Right of Consumption. That way we can get that damage right to their face if we can't get through with an attack. I want to give a special shout out to maybe our alternate commander that we've hit in our deck. That's Grevin, Predator Captain. This card allows us to sacrifice those creatures that we've stolen to boost Grevin's power and draw us a ton of cards. That's going to get me into the next part of the deck, Messing with Combat. We're going to use cards like Bothersome Quasit to goad our opponent's creatures. That way, if we can't steal them, we can still make them attack our opponents and still get that same kind of value. To stick with that goading theme, we're going to have cards like Coronation of Chaos. It's going to goad three creatures, just a single-use spell. Death Kiss is another creature that's going to allow us to goad other creatures. However, it gives us a nice bonus because whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks one of our opponents, double its power. Disrupt Decorum might be one of the best goad effects of all time. It's going to go to every creature we don't control. That can completely turn a game upside down and in our favor. Frenzied Saddle Brute's going to incentivize our opponents to attack our other opponents because it's going to give their creatures haste when they're not attacking us. Gix Yawgmoth Praetor is another card that incentivizes our opponents to attack each other. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of our opponents, its controller may pay one life. If they do, they draw a card. Since we're going to do a fair amount of attacking with this deck, Grinzo Havoc Razor is going to fit in nicely. Whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to go to creature or exile the top card of their library and play that card. Karazakar the Eye Tyrant gives us the best of both worlds. It's going to let us go to creatures and incentivizes players to attack each other and not us. Carter Doom Scourge is going to help keep us protected because our opponents are going to have to attack each other and it gives us an added drain effect whenever an attacking creature dies. Our final entry into the combat fun is Kazul Tyrant of the Cliffs. It's going to make it so opponents won't want to attack us because we're going to get a 3-3 Ogre when they do. Now the real question is how are we going to pay off our strategy? Of course we're going to have some of those traditional aristocrat payoffs like Blood Artist where we get a drain and a life gain whenever a creature dies. Another fitting payoff for us is Garna, Bloodfist of Keld. Whenever another creature you control dies, draw a card if it was attacking, otherwise Garna's going to ping each opponent. Judith the Scourge Diva is going to pump our creatures by plus one plus zero. Also, whenever a non-token creature we control dies, it's going to ping any target.
Since we're going to be sacrificing all of our opponent's creatures, Jury, Master of the View, will get huge. Then we can sacrifice Jury to one-shot an opponent. Mahati Emporium Master is going to turn all of our opponent's creatures that we sacrificed into treasure tokens. That way we have enough mana to do it again next turn. You can't spell Black Red Sacrifice without Mayhem Devil. This little devil is going to make it whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, it will deal 1 damage to any target. Stalking Vengeance is another card that really piles on the punishment. Whenever another creature we control dies, it deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. Finally, we have Sir Conrad the Grim. This card just wins games. It's going to ping our opponents for about everything that happens in the game. This card's the best. And that about wraps it up for our deck tech on Sauron the Lidless Eye. Let me know in the comments below if you want to build this deck, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.